Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is while you're watching this. I'm going to be covering something that caused an accident to a friend of mine who I'm going to call Lucky because it was quite lucky where it happened rather than a minute before or a minute after when we were on 60 mile an hour roads which were quite entertainingly twisty. We were travelling through a village on our side of the road there was a parked car with a car coming the other way so we pulled up to uh, let the oncoming vehicle pass then we pulled out. We were next to a building site, I heard a bit of a crunch and I thought, oh, must be the building site. Then realised Lucky was no longer behind me. I spun round and he dropped his bike. He steered right to go round the car. When he tried to steer left, nothing happened and he uh, tried stopping, lost his footing and went over. And when we looked at his bike, we found his sat-nav cradle and arm had fallen off and dropped down between the forks, tank and frame. This is my Himalayan, but it shows you the position that the sat-nav ended up in. Of course, this meant the bars wouldn't move to the left, which caused the accident. So we picked the bike up, we picked Lucky up, he was okay, slightly bruised. Uh, bike had a couple of little scratches on it and uh, end of the clutch lever had broken off. But it could have been far worse if we were in the national speed limits at the time. Now, I had a look at the bits that were holding his sat-nav. I know the mount ball was genuine, now we had a look at the clamp section that had come apart and I don't want to use the term knock off so I'll, I think I'll use tribute act instead and you can see here a genuine ram mount and the one that Lucky had on his bike uh, in comparison with each other. Moving from the left we have the handlebar mount, the joining bar, then we come to a genuine ram mount double ball, it's actually the heaviest dumbbell I can actually lift with my scrawny arms, a genuine ram mount clamp and a genuine adder ball which I've covered in a previous film. So at the end of the day I took these home with me and I thought I'll see how good this, these clamps actually are. Now I wanted to tighten them both up by the same amount but I haven't got anything I can use with my torque wrench to actually ensure they're both the same tightness so I've got a 10 kilo weight a bungee and I sort of held the weight off the ground just to make sure that I've got the same level of tightness on both of the mounts then it's let's see if I can pull this apart so grabbing the mounts either end and yes the knockoff bar mount pulls out of the knockoff bar very very easily the knockoff bar will pull off a genuine ram mount but it takes a lot more effort and as you can see the genuine ram mount and ram balls are not going anywhere and these aren't actually fully tight as as much as i can by hand these are you can see here i'm actually tightening them up even more so i decided to have a bit of a measure up so we have two genuine balls uh, the knockoff one then a genuine one i found after i started shooting this film so i just stuck it on at the end now how i'm going to measure these because we've got a ram logo and a seam from where they're made i'm going to go 45 degrees to the seam avoiding the ram logo to get a good reproducibility without going over anything that's going to affect the measurements. The clamp parts I've marked the ends up A and B so I know which ends I'm measuring. Now a clever person marks them both up A and B as I have done here but originally I did it like this because I'm rather lazy. If you mark up an A and a B on opposite ends as long as the A and B paints aren't on the same end you know you've got it the right way round. Now the measurements I'm going to take are five so it's going to be the ones here at the front of the open jaw of the clamp and the ones on the side here. And here's a little sketch I did showing the various measurements. I know B, D and D look the same but they're not, they're actually measuring in different places. But into the garage for the trusty vernier caliper, we don't use digital ones, we don't use dial ones, we use good old mechanical ones and if you know how to read these you'll see this is reading 11.8 millimetres. And here are the measurements I got. I'm not leaving these up on the screen for too long, I'll put them back up at the end so you can have a look at them if you wish. Now what this reveals is that the genuine ram mounts close in at the end slightly whereas the knockoff one opens up the genuine ones when you tighten them up to put pressure on the ball so it doesn't move it's also retained by the the end so it can't be pulled out the knockoff one is only the friction against the ball that's stopping the whole thing from being pulled out as happened in Lucky's case another thing on the ram mount that's not on the knockoff is that when you do the screw up the screw bottoms out the two halves of the clamp don't actually touch each other you can see this here with some genuine ram balls by the the space you can see between the two halves of the clamp whereas the knockoff one the two halves of the case are the bit that meets to stop me tightening it up any further. The further issue with this is, as well as it's relying purely on friction to retain the balls, with the smaller ball size, you might not be able to get enough friction on them to secure them properly. If you look at this 
the gap here you can just see a little bit of space between the genuine ball and the knockoff clamp but at the other end whether it's a knockoff ball and a knockoff clamp it's fully closed so you might get away with using one of these on genuine ram balls and here's showing you again that the ram bar actually does bottom out on the screw because you can still turn the two pieces it takes a bit of effort but when you clamp up the knockoff one, you can twist the two halves apart. Of course, you can't do this with a ball in the way, and it does start undoing the clamp because of the way the screw and nut are locked in. Looking at the construction of the clamp, the ram has a couple of washers on it, as well as the screw and the wing nut and the two halves of the clamp. The knockoff one doesn't. There aren't any extra washers there. It's just purely the wing nut, the screw and the two halves of the clamp. So having had a good look at this, I thought I'd try and pull the clamps apart again with no clamping force on them, having seen that the ram mount one does close up towards the end. So I tightened them just far enough so the ball would not move in the end of the clamp on the knockoff one, and with hardly any effort at all, pulled it straight out. Now the ram one, I've had this a few times when I've been setting cameras up and things, you have to undo them a long way to get the balls in and do them back up a long way. You can flop them about and the clamp won't disengage from the balls. So obviously, even when loose, the clamp is more secure. So I'm not even going to do this one up fully. You, I can still move the genuine ram ball and I cannot pull this apart because it's held securely. Now, I have been rambling on quite a while looking into this, but it was quite interesting. I wanted to find out what had gone wrong with the ramp and what caused the accident. And I think this is the solution. Without having seen the sat-nav drop off, I can't be certain. It might have come off in the accident, but that was the only thing jamming Lucky's steering up. So I would say that it's this dodgy knockoff ram mount copy rather than anything else that caused it. There was nothing on the road. I'd ridden over exactly the same path. It's just one of those things. But like I said, 60 seconds before, 60 seconds later, we'd have been on a faster road and this would not have ended up with a little bit of bruised ego, wounded pride and a few scratches on a bike. It would have been a trip to hospital via a hedge. So if you've got or are looking at getting any cheap ram mount copies, I would think twice about it. They're nowhere near secure enough. I don't know the amount of jerk it would take to actually pull one of these out, not having an accelerometer. But bouncing around British potholes, I dare say that this is a risk. Right, that's enough for me. I'll leave the figures up. So you can have a look at the obvious problems with the design of the knockoff one. The, the ball's smaller, it's not fully retained, and there's not a lot of clamping pressure on it, and no secondary means of restraint, which I would say would be very important on these clamps. I use them a lot. There's another film on here about my camera falling off with the GoPro mount, but it had been on there for years, and it was just fatigue on the plastic, particularly where I'd mounted it on the mirror stalk. So until I see you out on the roads or in the next film, happy riding stay safe and just have a look at anything you've put on your bike that may not quite be adequate for the purpose. Another way you can stay safe with your balls is have a look at the Deadpool testicular cancer film. It's the usual Deadpool humour and it could save your life one day. There's also one for the ladies for checking for the signs of breast cancer. So your health is important, grab it with both hands. Hopefully see you on the road or in the next film. Till then, tatty bye.